Welcome to Pat's Picks. This is the $20 Challenge. Thank you so much for coming by. Today is day 48, and unfortunately, it was a bit of a red day for me today. Down 18%. I made five trades, uh, three red, two green, minus 75, minus 78, plus 19, minus 36, and plus 16. So I decided to be a little bit more aggressive today, and I paid the price. Uh, sometimes the red days are just the price of just the cost of doing business, you know, when you're day trading. So, you know, red days are always great days to learn from, always days to, you know, focus on things that you can tighten on and improve. So, um, you know, never be perfect, but always strive to be better. And that's one thing I love about trading. There's there's always things to get better at on, better at and improve on and, and things to tighten up. And so uh, it's just uh, one long journey that I plan on taking forever. So, Anyways, without further ado, let's dive right into this. Uh, thank you all so much for coming by. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new here uh, and you enjoy it, please like and subscribe. A uh, quick shout out to the Discord. Launched a few weeks ago now. It's completely free. Always will be. Would love to have you there. So let's dive right in here. Trade number one. I want to get this Red Day video over with. Uh, if you guys are not new, then you know I hate Red Days. And the Red Day videos are never fun to make, but it's all part of the process. So trade number one got in at 10.58. Trade number two I got in a few minutes later. I decided to uh, hedge and hold today as a strategy. And I uh, did not expect the market to be this choppy. So the big move of the, of the day was really right here. Right when the market opened, we got this nice move to the upside. Um, really about a $6 move. And I actually woke up late today because... If you saw yesterday's video, it was multi it was a double birthday party for me, so I was way too tired. So uh, I strongly recommend you get enough sleep. Sleep is so important, especially when you're trading or doing anything where you have to really think. Um, it really affects your decision making. So um, I blame my lack of sleep today, you guys. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, but it is part of it. It all plays into it. So um, it is what it is. Moving on to trade number three. I uh, ended up holding those all day, so you'll see those at the end. Trade number three was right here on that blue arrow. Um, and this one I decided to try to stop loss, take profit order on this, and see if I can let it really run. Unfortunately, it did not, and I got stopped out. So I got in right here on this blue arrow, out right here at the bottom. And uh, at one point, I was in at 21 and it was at $32 at the peak. And then I ended up stopping out at 25 so that was a 19% gain. I believe it was about 40 at one point, whatever that math is. So I was looking for a big move, though. So that was my decision uh, to decide to be more aggressive instead of taking profit quick, you know, like I would on a more conservative day, more of like a scalping day where I try to take trades between, you know, sometimes you guys have seen uh, trades of less than a minute last week. So anywhere between, you know, a minute and 30 minutes, um, those are the nice quick trades that I really like to take, but to get a nice big huge trade and those nice gainers uh, Like those ones I've sold to early on, you know, you have to hold them all day. So I was looking for something like that um, You know, I was planning on letting one of those contracts basically run to zero while the other other one would hopefully run into the hundreds of percentage uh, But we didn't get quite the volatility. I was looking for today. It was just choppy. So you know, a lot of indecision in the market. People are trying to figure out what's going on with the banks. And uh, I'll wrap the video up with a little article on that. Uh, I know it's pretty boring. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm reading it. I'm just like, oh, man, trying to stay awake. But it is important information nonetheless. All right, trade number four right here was this orange arrow. That 370 put I got in at 1531. And I got out 12 minutes later. For that quick 36% loss, once I didn't see that we are getting that downward move I was looking for. I was looking for that pushback through the 384 right here. Uh, or maybe even all the way down to 380 if we're going to get that nice volume at the end of the day. But we did not, so it is what it is. Uh, got out fairly quick on that one. Um, and then the last trade of the day was the 368 put. I held that for about 13 minutes. I got in right here. Again, I was looking for that big push down to 380. Uh, the market did not want to hand it over though today. So that's all right. You know, I got plenty of buying power for tomorrow. And uh, I'll just stay optimistic and, and be ready for that next big move and be ready to ride that wave. So I got out real quick there. Well, not real quick, but pretty quick for a nice 16% gain. 
and then I cut those losses on those other two uh, after hours right there at uh, at 104 and 115. So not a great day. Here's a look at the account. Uh, I hate to see it. You know, I'm just going to let you look real quick. Here's the transaction history. Again, if you're new here, I'm completely transparent. Uh, you, I won't just be showing you guys screenshots ever. It's always the whole history. Um, you know, there's no manipulation, no hiding, anything like that going on here. So uh, to wrap it up, here is a, an article regarding this bank situation. I'm just going to read some highlights on here and then scroll through and you guys can read it if you really want to. But, but again, I know a lot of people find this very boring, myself included, but it is very important. So uh, at the same time, I find it interesting, but I do understand if it's hard to listen to. So here we go, you guys. Thanks for coming by. I greatly appreciate everyone watching, liking, commenting, uh, joining the Discord. It's just, it means the world to me, and it's so much fun growing this community. So with that being said, here we go. Washington's banking rescue had a rocky start Monday. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, all of the banking stocks were not doing good, even though some of the other um, tech stocks were doing fairly well. Um, on Webull, for some reason, if you go and you try to look at the heat maps, um, as opposed to the app, I don't know why it does not show the banking as an option right here. But if you have an app or use a phone or an iPad, um, you can see right here, I'll pull it up, do a quick screen record on my iPad so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can go here and, you know, just go to that general market tab, scroll all the way down to the heat maps. And then right here it has banking and investment. And then it, it gives you the whole watch list of all these different. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Banking. Here we go. And you click on that and it goes right to the banking investment. And you can see this watch list of basically all these major stocks that aren't doing much after hours. Oh, that's the 15 second chart. So you can just see all these stocks on what they're doing. Um, but they were all down for the day, so it's pretty crazy. But anyways, I just want to show you guys that heat map real quick because it's, you know, it's a kind of a fun little tool you can use to uh, basically organize a bunch of different stocks you want to look at all into one place, um, which is really helpful in situations like this. So, anyways, let's wrap this up. You know, it was a rocky day today, as we saw, very choppy. Um, we had a huge, and we had a nice gap up, and then a sell off, and then and then Biden started talking. And so here we go. Day began with President Biden at the White House seeking to calm fears. Um, Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. Your deposits will be there when you need them. You know, that's bullish. Um, relieve customers lined up outside SVB branches to withdraw funds they had feared would be lost. So the fact that, to me, that everyone's lining up outside now, um, just to pull money out, that's not bullish. That doesn't tell me that all those customers are confident that their money's secure there. That tells me they don't feel safe still and that they're going to take their money out anyways. So it's it's kind of interesting. They're trying to say that everything's all good now, um, but even the customers are still going there and lining up for hours uh, to pull their money out. So I don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> lots of trickery going on. It's It's pretty interesting to see. Um, Wall Street bank stocks were ravaged, like I was just showing you guys, they were all red today, uh, with regional institutions hit hardest. First Republic Bank, share fell down 80% today, which, 80%, my gosh. That plunge came despite an infusion from JP Morgan. So even though they got a bunch of money, uh, the stock still tumbled, but, you know, their argument is the stock price and the health of the bank aren't, you know, hand in hand. So basically just ignore the stock price and your money's still safe. That's what they want people to think. You know, I don't know how it all works. I'm just <laughs> I'm just relaying information here. Uh, Citigroup also lost more than 7% and Wells Fargo fell 6%. Uh, payrolls are being met in Silicon Valley because they were bailed by the feds. And also they're trying to say that this isn't coming from taxpayers' dollars. I'm not really sure how that wouldn't, but... That's what they want us to think, and that's what some people think. Some people think that's not true. Of course, it's coming from taxpayers' dollars. I don't know. Again, just relaying information. There aren't massive outflows that we can see, but people are lined up for hours to pull out money. Seems strange. Seems contradictory. I don't know. Uh, so I think that means it has been reasonably successful, says Lawrence Summers, former Treasury Secretary. So... 
while the market response was noteworthy, falling stock prices pose no imminent threat to the banks. So like I said, they're trying to say that they don't correlate necessarily and to not fear the banks just because the stock price is falling. Um, so long as depositors' withdrawals remain at customary levels. I don't know if lining up for hours at a time is normal or customary, but it doesn't sound like it to me. So again, a little contradictory. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, they they say it's fine as long as it's at customary levels, but people are lining up to pull their money out. So I don't know. Hopefully that is just, you know, the initial fear reaction. And over the next week or so, that kind of simmers down. And maybe people start to bring money back. I don't know. Um, bank health is determined by the amount of capital they hold and reserve to absorb losses and the adequacy of their available assets to meet their depositor withdrawals. Uh, banks don't live or die based on what the stock price is. So again, just reiterating. Less than a week ago, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, J. Powell, told Congress that interest rates might need to go higher than the central bank had expected to bring inflation under control. And after all this coming out, it does not seem like that is a good idea. Um, this is part of the problem. Part of the reason that this problem is 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 here right now is because the interest is so high and the banks weren't proper properly leveraged to handle it and you know bada bing bada boom next thing you know feds knocking on the door and they're firing all the managers and taking over the bank so pretty crazy uh now 40 percent of investors expect the fed to leave rates untouched and start cutting them by midsummer now if they start cutting um that would be amazing and i would expect stocks to rally for sure uh, consumer price index reading Tuesday, so tomorrow uh, we got that information coming out. Um, Goldman, Goldman Sachs late Sunday said it expects the Fed to pause its year-long campaign of rate increases. So Goldman Sachs thinks that uh, the Fed will stop and probably, you know, I'm guessing they probably also uh, think they'll start cutting midsummer or somewhere along that line if, you know, if they think they're going to pause. So I would imagine they think there's going to be a pause and then a cut, not a pause, and then an increase. Uh, but I don't know. That's just what this says. Just going off of the information I have in front of me. Um, the failure of SBP and second troubled lender, Signature Bank of New York, posed a systematic threat, or systematic threat, systematic risk. Fed officials closed both banks, guaranteed their deposits to 250000 and removed their, their team. So, uh, like I just said... They came knocking, took over, fired the management teams, and told all of the customers, hey, you guys can come get your money if you want it. It's here. And that's what they did. They lined up. <laughs> oh, man, pretty crazy. They're like, all right, not taking a chance here. I really wonder what the numbers are. Um, I know that – I don't know off the top of my head, actually. I think it was $40 billion taken out in a couple days from the bank, which – broke the previous record from 08 or somewhere around there. Again, don't quote me. This is general. Uh, and I think that number was like $16 billion before. So crazy records being broke as far as withdrawals. And uh, it makes sense why it takes them, you know, why there's lines going hours with, with those kinds of records. So here's the rest of the article. Um, I'll just kind of scroll slowly. So if you guys want to pause and read it yourself, feel free. I've already read it. I just, you know, I don't want everyone to fall asleep while I'm reading uh, I understand this can be very gruesome. Sometimes it's easier to read yourself. So maybe not, you know. If it's not, hey, sorry I didn't read the whole thing. Um, but anyways, that's all I have for tonight. And I hope you stay happy and healthy. I'll see you tomorrow.